the PWBA returns to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for the 11th consecutive season. Welcome inside Princess Lanes for the finals of the Three Rivers Open. Competition begins tonight with a breakthrough game featuring Rachel Perez, defending champ Michelle Feldman, and Kendra Gaines. The athlete with the highest score will break through and enter the head-to-head -head competition against Marianne DeRupo in the semi-final match. And the winner there will advance to the championship match and take on 25-time titleist Leanne Barrett. Hello, everyone. I'm Jan Schmidt. Thanks for tuning in for the second telecast of the PWBA Fall Series. Three of our finalists tonight have been regulars this season, combining for 19 TV appearances and five titles thus far. That's Barrett, Gaines, and Feldman. Now, another regular is at my side this evening. She's the only woman to repeat as champion here at Princess Lanes in 10 years, Carolyn Dorn Ballard. Carolyn, let's talk about the other two finalists. Marianne DeRupo's in her third straight telecast. That's quite a turnaround from the last few years. Making the show at the Players' Championship really reinforced for Marianne that the changes she was making in her game were the correct ones. Not only that, it helped take her confidence to another level, helped get those little voices of self-doubt that she had in her head away from there, and also got her on the roll to where she is today. She's here tonight, and she is ready for another victory. Okay, well, how about Rachel Perez? For those of you at home who say, who is that? Well, it's okay. It's only her second TV appearance. Her first came in 1997. And Carolyn, for those who like to root for the underdog, their pick has to be Rachel Perez. It is so hard to believe that Rachel Perez has not made more telecasts in her eight-year career. She's talented and dedicated, and this week, she was consistent from day one. What holds Rachel back? You know what it is? She overanalyzes. She loves to teach bowling. So she was finding herself while she was teaching people, she was analyzing herself. While she's bowling, she's analyzing the people she's teaching. Way too much thinking. She went home over the break, looked at some videotapes of herself, went and worked on the cat's lane, and you know what she decided? I'm gonna focus on my game. Here she is tonight. She is ready and has her bowling career on the right path. Sure is on the right path, and so far she's on about the same path as the rest of the finalists tonight. Kendra Gaines in the lead by four pins over Rachel Perez. Michelle Feldman trailing by seven pins. Carolyn, they've been all over the place, but clean. Everybody clean so far. Everybody clean. I noticed uh, Michelle just went to a different ball. She was using something that went down the lane a little bit further. Wasn't getting the reaction she wanted. She changed to a ball with a little more surface and a little more roll. That was the result. Kendra Gaines now. You saw two titles for her. The second one coming on this year. And the doubles to her. This is great. Right. Looks like we tuned in at the right time because they were all lining it up now and starting to strike. Kendra actually was the one that came out with the ball with the most surface and had looked like she had the best reaction in the beginning. And Rachel taking a pause there. Maybe overanalyzing. <laughs> Maybe. A little left. She's, she doesn't appear to be too nervous. She said it's been getting better. She finished eighth and seventh the last two events in the summer, so it really has helped. And in fairness, she doesn't bowl all the events. She misses a lot of coaching. Right, and also she said, you know, with the position round last night, she was very comfortable. She said she learned from her past experiences. She pulled a great game, and that's why she's here tonight. of women felt that pair to pair to pair the it was very tough to strike plain and simply to get 10 you could you could go to a pair and shoot a great 180 game never miss the pocket next pair shoot 260 just had to hang in there and be patient so Feldman now in the lead by three pins because of that double she just gains leaving another four pin she's that's been the pin of her choice to leave apparently a four pin and Rachel Perez is quickly now in the seventh frame. Oh, tipping that four pin. Needed to see a few of those this week to get to the telecast. She's made some very good shots for she not has. being on TV for quite some time. She really has come out pretty strong. Square it up for Kendra Gaines. So right now, Feldman's still in the lead by three over Gaines and by eight over Perez. Now 
Michelle Feldman won the last title, what we classify as a title, back in Louisville in the summer. She also won the Champions Challenge, the Sport Bowling Champions Challenge. And then she went on to win a regional in, I believe, I wanted to say the Baltimore area, but I don't know if it was in Baltimore, but she went to Bowler Regional a couple weeks later, and boom, won that. Yeah. I mean, she was definitely on a roll there for a few weeks, and here she is again. Bowling on synthetic lane surface, 43 feet was the uh, length this week. Offense oil, and that has a tendency to break down in the front part of the lane in the middle, and that's what really pulls with the 43 feet in length and the uh, lane surface and the offense. It really forced the ladies to play deep. We had to move in, started out a little tighter the first day. People used surface, and as the week went on, you just had to get deeper and deeper and deeper. Tough break for Rachel Perez. Hit the nose, it didn't spoil. Tough break from Michelle Feldman, gave her a nine pin. I think Rachel now has a six, seven, ten. She'll change balls. Two twenty average on the TV pair. So she takes the wood wisely, and that's the first open frame of this match. Any of the three in the breakthrough game. Don't forget only one will advance out of these three. Michelle Feldman, you know, you were talking about beating her too. You know, Michelle's such a powerful player that everyone can they get deep and inside and beat her. It's uh, something to write home. I did, and she was proud of me. I was playing fifth arrow, and I shot 260 game. I said, Who said the straight girls can't play? She started to giggle. She, got, she liked it off her hand. She got it right. Ball just jerked right at the end. 3 6 10. Second shot for Rachel Perez in the ninth. Really needed to strike there. A 10 pin not going down. You know, the audience was kind of trying to encourage her. She, Rachel, do you think she feels intimidated at all? Or no. I don't think she feels intimidated at all. I think she's very happy with her performance, how she got here, the, the changes she's made, especially with her mental focus. She's worked with Dr. Dean Hennitz. Things are really coming around for her. I think she's going to take this as a positive and go on to next week. Right now, Michelle Feldman in the lead by 12 over Gaines, and Perez trailing by 29. Feldman taking a little time, stepping up. Michelle had to do was move deeper and throw it harder. She can really overpower the lane, and her speed was one of her assets this week. And that's why she's here this week. Besides, besides even being able to overpower the lane, speed was so critical. Kendra Cameron, Cameron excuse me, now Gaines. Cameron, a long time ago. Yeah. Ranked fifth now. That's okay. We want to say hi to Sue Cameron, who's yeah, your mom. I, so. I was looking at that. That's where that came from, because we yeah, that's right. promised her we'd say hello. Got that one a little wide, no recovery, two, four, five. And that's what happened this week. If you got it a little too far right with a lot of speed, you could throw it right through your break point. That was the result. Slides, two, four, five. And you would think with all the hand that Michelle has, you're saying, why didn't they recover? Kendra Gaines really needing to strike to force Michelle Feldman to get any of these pins. Really great shot. A uh, score of 2-12 for Michelle Feldman. The tidbit about Kendra, I think she's very happy with her performance this. here. Yes, this week because she broke her finger last year. She did, and she gets a patch for that because it's a Dutch 200. She spared every time, every other frame. And struck every other frame. Rachel, very happy with her reach. She has nothing to be ashamed of. She pulled a great game, made some really good shots. 
that you'd like to thank your sponsors, Ed and Nancy Herndon, great people from Texas, and hello to her family as well. So Michelle Feldman is the winner of the breakthrough game with a score of 2-12. She'll advance to head-to-head -to -head competition against Marianne DeRupo in the semifinal match when we return. The championship round finals of the Three Rivers Open are being brought to you by the Women's International Bowling Congress, striving for 87 years to identify and fulfill the needs of women bowlers. By Travelodge Hotels, proud to be the official lodging sponsor of the Professional Women's Bowling Association. And by PWBA.com, relaunched to bring you more advanced and accessible news and information. Final score at the breakthrough game, Michelle Feldman 212 to Gaines' is 200 and Perez's 179. And that means it is Michelle Feldman that breaks through to the semi-final match. She'll take on Marianne Garupo. As you mentioned, after winning that title, the major, the Miller High Life Players Championship. The monkey now off her back. It's been a long drag since 1998 prior to that win. Oh, the Hamilton off the deck. Her third consecutive show for the first time in her career. Gets the ball a little right, barely hits the head pin. Double taps on the seventh when you get it off the deck. Plays is said the right lane is a little bit tighter in the middle part of the lane and even down the lane. <coughs> Why? I said Kendra was using a lot of surface. Michelle changed to a ball with a little more surface, a little more roll. We'll see what Marianne does. Feldman's family, Gary and Linda Feldman, and her uncle Bud, who is Bud Harvard, have put up a $10,000 offer for anyone who shoots a 300 on television. So we want to thank them, and it's nice that the bonus is back out there for the ladies. It's $10,000 per show, so if two of them would possibly shoot it in one show, they would have to split it. That's okay. I think some will take my attention. Wall skidding a little bit further down the lane. Their first shot doesn't quite recover. Mary Ann leaves a two pin. Changes balls, ball gets down the lane. Shoot right, shoot right at it. And there's a look at Uncle Bud on the left. 
Gary Feldman on the right. Um, Michelle Feld Feldman's grandfather, Linda Feldman, her grandmother, is, is in the background. She doesn't actually, like to sit on the show. Actually, she's right here over my left hand shoulder, right she here. Is. She's, she's giving me the evil eye. We better not get her on TV, but she is right here watching. She never usually sits on the show, and honestly, it might be an omen, because Michelle does earn quite often when she's standing there in the back. That's true. Marianne DeRupo has her mother here, Rosemary, and always says she loves to bowl good in front of her, but really hates to disappoint her if she doesn't bowl well. Marianne, like in the left lane, another good shot, that's all 10. Marianne DeRupo quickly was also the bowler of the month for July with the, by the Bowling Writers Association of America. So congratulations to her. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. 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 Talked about all the wins Michelle's had recently, and she's owned Louisville, winning the last two televised events there. The Louisville Open, defeating Kim Terrell in the championship match, 255 to 180, and again defeating Kim in the Sport Bowling Champions Challenge, 182 to 167. Right now in the semifinal match here at the Three Rivers Open, and she trails by nine. High gets the, almost leaves the four nine, gets the four out, leaves the nine, she changed balls, easy spare. She was looking to take the lead on that shot if she would have struck. Ever since Michelle made the ball change, she looks like she's got a pretty good reaction. And Mary Ann came out with some good shots. She looks like she's got a reaction. We should have a nice close match. And we'll be right back with the rest of the semifinal match through four and a half frames. Michelle Feldman. Trails by nine, Marion Drupo in the lead. We'll be right back. Feldman now trailing by just four pins in the sixth frame on her way, and that will change that. But Marion Drupo struck for a double with a nosedive and then split, leaving a 4 7 10. And now Michelle Feldman with a big split. Looks like she gets a far enough right hit up on it just a little bit. That's the result. And she knew it because she lifted up the foul line as soon as she let it go. One thing Michelle's really been starting to work on. Trying to work on this, she was not hitting up on the ball so much, a little smoother into the lane. She hits up onto it, the ball jerks even harder on the back, and that's not what you want. So, right now, is there getting the score up there? DeRufo in the lead, Feldman trailing by 18 pins, both with a split in the sixth frame. Michelle said one thing that was going to keep her going this year especially since she's in the race for Bowler of the Year, is her mental focus. Now when she bowls a bad game, she doesn't, she doesn't really go on and on about it. Quick, so I don't forget it, I can't come back. She just blows it off, goes to the next pair, and makes it for Okay, did you watch her walking back? She's looking at her equipment on the side, I think, trying to say, okay, what's going on? Okay, I need to try something else. It'll be time for a ball change. Like I said this week, the lanes just started to hook more and more every day. You had to move deeper. Ball well, might be rolling up too much for her, hooking too much on the back. Now, Carolyn, another event went on this week, the Brunswick Shootout, during the week, and I heard that was a lot of fun. What was the format on that? It was great. After we were done bowling on Tuesday, we bowled. Everyone had one shot. You had to throw a ball. You had to get nine for two rounds to stay in. After that, you had a strike. It was great. And Lisa Bishop wound up winning $1,500, and Brenda Norman came in second by leaving a stone Eight. Oh, $600. That'll be hard to take. Marianne hitting the nose now, but breaking up the split this time. And it's 610. Lane's definitely going through a transition. Marianne seemed like she liked that shot. Got it right. Hooked on the end. Might be time to just move a little bit further left. It's all the girls kept doing all week. We all just kept saying, gotta get deeper, gotta get deeper. Change balls here to shoot the spare, and she's had a lot of continued success these last few weeks, and she talked about that a little bit earlier. Well, this week, I have to thank Kelly Kulik in the beginning of the week. We've practiced together several times. And in a practice session, she says to me after an hour, are you working on something? And I said, yeah, throwing the ball bad right now. So she pointed something out in my timing, which really helped me this week. But overall, the people I really need to thank would be track, because their equipment has really benefited my game on the sport condition and the sport patterns, as well as Tommy and Tita Semez, who have really made an 
holistic asset in my game with changing the grip in my pitches. But overall, the hard work and the dedication from all the people that surround me have really put me here today. And she does have a lot of fan support, Miriam. She works very hard to respond to all the fans who write to her. That's a job in and of itself. Yes, it is. She does have a great fan base, and she does. She writes letters. She writes thank you notes. She answers her emails on her website. I mean, she really is a true professional. And for those at home, though, if you're writing, understand that it does take a period of time to get back. To right, people. exactly. It might take a few days. You're traveling and, and difficult to respond to. Right, a little hard to get online sometimes. <laughs> a great shot on the left lane. Made the adjustment, left the 10 pin. Michelle Feldman now trailing by 17 as she steps up in the eighth frame. Michelle just changed balls, went over to her bag, went to a ball. It's down the lane a little bit further than what she was using. Not quite as aggressive on the back. Let's see what she does. High flush. She knew exactly what was going to do. I trust Michelle. Marianne thanked Kelly Kulik. Kelly came in sixth, back, just back from coaching in Australia. Anne-Marie Dugan, sixth place last week, seventh place this week, or the last event. Tammy Turner, hey, high game in the tournament, 287. 11th, Carol Giniotti Block, back from knee surgery, and also a defending champ here. And Kim Adler, selling her little patch on eBay there and making some uh, notoriety for the PWBA. It worked on lane 38, but not on 37. Ooh. Lane 37 seems like it's breaking down a little bit quicker. Did not look like a bad shot. Didn't quite get as far right as she had been. Gets a break and leaves a 4-7, but from the very beginning, it seemed like the left end lane was breaking down quicker than the right lane. She won this event for her first, very first title oh, yes. in 1993. Yes, she did. So she has a chance to repeat as a mm -hmm. champion here to tie you, Carol, in yes. Pittsburgh. Good shot by Marion. She liked that when she let go. Leaves the 10 pin, made the adjustment on that lane. Starts the ball even deeper, gets it further right than the last shot. Doesn't quite turn the corner as hard. Leaves the tent. Mary, you may notice Mary is using a, a wrist device. She said she put that on last night. She realized she was giving up the way she was entering the heads of the lane. Her wrist was a little weak. She put it on to turn up her wrist a little more, get a little more consistent through the heads of the middle part of the lane, and it really worked. The past princesses, the winners here. Michelle Feldman, of course, defending champion. And Carolyn, you have a couple of, you're listed a couple times on there, as well as your sister, Kathy Doran Lizzie. Sandra Jo Shirey just had a little baby girl. I was glad to hear that. Marianne DeRupa has a chance to regain another title here. And Carol Norman, the WIBC inductee and a fantastic coach, now travels the country giving lessons. Another Pearson also has won this event. Kim Straub, who no longer bowls, has a child at home. Mm -hmm. Mary Andrupo now in the 10th frame. She's up by 16 pins. She made a mark. Great shot by Mary Ann. She said she found him very similar this week to Collierville, where she won. So she was able to use the same ball she used in Collierville and get the same feel. Great shot by Marianne. Looks like she threw that one a little bit harder and increased her ball speed. Great reaction. Michelle Feldman shaking her head no, and that's because she knows what that strike meant. And she will probably not advance. But Michelle Feldman's looking uh, for a bowler of the year. She feels she has a, a real shot at it, as she does right now, first in the rankings, first in earnings, absolute average. Like I said, and she'll take this as a positive. She said, whether I win or not, I need to focus on that I did really well that week. I need to go on to the next week, not ponder on the bad, be patient, and hopefully it'll all come around. <laughs> Marianne DeRupo 
will move on. But first, when we return, a look at some future bowling stars in this week's WIBC Extra Frames. Final score of the semifinal match, Marianne DeRupo 202 to Feldman's 185. Coming up next, Marianne DeRupo takes on Leanne Boomer Barrett. Oh, and Leanne Barrett hoping to take home that trophy. And Marianne DeRupo will be first up. Leanne Barrett had the choice and said, Marianne, go ahead. Absolutely. Wants her to end on that other lane. Career versus Leanne on TV. 2 0 against Leanne on TV also. Could be an omen. Marianne didn't lose to any of the finals no. tonight on TV, so in her career. So she knows what she's doing out here. Coming up light with the bucket. Could have been a little anxious. Didn't want to throw it slow. Seems like she put a little more speed on that. Shot it right through the break point, left the bucket. Very common leave this week. Now she's shooting it with her spare ball, Carolyn. What do you think the percentage? I don't know what the percentages are. I I'd say the, uh, some of the girls use their spare ball, some of them use their strike. I use my strike ball. When I leave anything with, uh, you know, double wood, I feel like my percentages go up with the strike ball and hook into it. But uh, as she proved me wrong right there, I mean, she made it with her spare ball. I, mean, I so. think, you know, I think it's, it's a personal preference. Exactly. Plus, maybe the condition we're shooting on as well. Absolutely. First look at Leanne Barrett tonight, 35 years old, 16 years on tour, and 25 titles. She's tied for the third place in all-time title titles for BWBA, and she's trying to get it on her own with a 26th victory here. Great come-out shot with, uh, from Leanne. She's using a pearlized ball, gets down the lane a little further, lays off the back, doesn't really jerk very hard on the back end. Used that, she used that ball in the night blocks, and she said that was one of her strengths uh, this week. Night blocks, she'd get deeper, get the ball right. Where to go. PWBA.com underwent a facelift over the summer and recently unveiled its new look. The beauty of the new site runs more than skin deep. It's your information source for PWBA, including schedules, entries, players' bios, photos, and standings. Plus, it displays the complete line of new PWBA logoed merchandise and live scoring. All this in a user-friendly format, so make sure you go and check it out. That's PWBA.com. Check out our sponsors page as well and help support the sponsors. That's a quote of PWBA. Leanne Barrett with a strike in the second frame. Leanne starting the ball in deeper. Not at getting as far right as she had been in, at night, but she's got a little hold with that ball. Blows the rack. Watching and Marianne DeRupo now. Marianne struggled that last morning. She liked the uh, the nighttime better, but as you said, she put on mm -hmm. that Robbie's and it really seemed to help her. She said it really helped to keep her wrist in the right position where she needed to be to get the ball down the lane. To, to, to allow her to play the, the lane the way she wanted to angle it into the pocket. I mean, that's just what she wanted. She felt like her wrist was really getting a little lazy at doing it. And this gave her that little more support. She kept the ball the way she wanted to angle it through the heads. And that was very important to her this week. As the lanes broke down, she had to keep getting left, yet you still had to keep your angles going the right way. And it was one less thing for her to worry about. You have to worry about a wrist right here. We saw some of the other finishers earlier. Let's take a look at the rest. Shanna Ray, she's cashed in every event this year. And Jennifer Swanson, she aggravated a foot injury. She may have to take off a few weeks. Marsha Kimrowski becoming a consistent cashier, one of our future stars out here. And Jackie Schneider making her second top 24. Glad to see her make the finals. Michelle Arrington came back out. She was the alternate. We're glad to see her back out here. Rupo, max score possible, 277. Of course, Leanne Barrett could still shoot 290. Marianne changed balls on that shot. Seems like it rolled and recovered a little bit harder. Up to 610. Moved a little bit deeper, at, way deeper than she was playing that lane. Got it right. Snaps through the nose. That's what she's looking for. The last few shots felt, looks like she threw it a little bit hard and it wouldn't recover, and then when she softened up, it went through the nose. That's that's 
you know, you're in the wrong ball, and you got to make a move. And it's sometimes hard to make a move so quickly on television. Oh, Ooh, an error there. 43 feet. The oil went, and on the outsides, it was a little bit heavier. Saw this a lot this week. Just scoots right by the six. See the disappointment in her face, but she regrouped. Been working on her patience. Good shot by Leanne. I'll tell you, Leanne has just been on fire this year. I mean, from the very first tournament, she made some changes in her game, worked with her coach, Rod Ross, and I mean, just everything's coming together. Her hip feels good. Sure, it gets a little stiff every now and then. So does her knee. But she's been walking well out onto her, keeping it stretched. I mean, really, she just, this is the Leanne from 90, 91 when she's Bowler of the Year. I mean, this was, it was just a consistent week to week thing with Leanne. She was always in the hunt. Well, you can see that 95 television appearances she had there in her 16 years. And she is striking right now. That's three in a row for Leanne Barrett. Rupo was talking to us last night, Carol, about how much better her patience is now than it was when she came out on tour or even over the last few years, and that's a key. I was just going to say, being being in this being in this position right now, uh, been there, there's a lot of things going through your mind right now. You're saying, okay, she's lined up. I got to get it together. But you know what? I got to be patient. I got to take one shot at a time and make the best shots I can. Fortunate to kick the seven pin out, leaving the three, six, ten. She did move deeper. Doesn't seem like she's quite getting it as far right as she was the other ball she was using. And this ball seems to be flipping a little bit harder. She could probably make the move and get this ball just a little bit further right and see if that would help her with the adjustment. Now she just slid by the 6'10. She's on the other lane. She'll have to be cautious. Cover all three pins with the ball. And sliding oh, by the three pin. Well, you know, that could be a few things. Let me tell you, I, with the oil and pattern, we said there's a little more oil on the outside of the lane. The ball had a tendency to scoot past the spares. We had to make sure she threw right at it. No chance for recovery. Picks the 610 right off. Also, could just be a mental error. You know, she's, I mean, she's in a championship match again. Mm -hmm. Third consecutive show. She's on a roll, putting a little pressure on herself. I mean, we all do it. Sure. And you just have to, you know, get up on your next shot and say, hey, start over. <laughs> great shot. Yeah, she got shot. that one a little bit further right. Got a little ball speed on it. Ring 10. Great shot. Still as deep as she was, but see how the ball, the projection is a little bit further right. Great shot. So once again, she'll try to cover the spare. shows USA Today and there's a look at the millionaires on two or three of them that was just in USA Today and Leanne Barrett attempting to become number four she needs 15,682 to get there this year and first place this week $9,000 second 4,800 well on her way I could see in. in two tournaments here Leanne could be our next millionaire and with seven tournaments to go hmm I'm going to really go out a limb on this one, and I'm going to say that I bet you in the next seven shows, Leanne will make one of them, at least one. Well, you are lucky you can do that. You're right enough for Leanne. Exactly. Right. So you can go out there. No, since I said that when she does, I'm going to ask her to take me out to dinner. And Leanne's last seven tournaments, look at this. On first, roll, uh -huh. tenth, second, fifth, first, first, third and possibly first again. That's that's pretty awesome. And that... And first that order that was, it shows first qualified first. Well, yes, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. If you can hear oh, the oh, sirens, yeah. they are really going on. There's a volunteer fire department nearby. We're happy to see that they're not coming here, thank goodness. 
gets this ball a little left to target, goes high, leaves the 310. One thing, with Leanne being a pass bowler of the year in 1990 and 91, I asked her, I said, are you thinking about it this year? You know, you're bowling great. She goes, I don't think about it at all. I take one week at a time. Oh, and sliding by the 310. So Leanne Barrett through five and a half frames has a big lead way out in front. We'll be back in a moment to see if she is named the princess this year. Rivers open in the middle of the championship match. Marianne DeRupo will be stepping up in the seventh, trailing by 35 pins. Leanne Barrett missed the 310, but still up by 35. I'm Jan Schmidt, along with Carolyn Dorn Ballard. We're at Princess Lanes in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Marianne is cashed in 12 of the 13 events this season. And if we date back over the last few years, uh, she's cashed pretty consistently as well, but Leanne Barrett tops on the list out of the five tonight at 90. 0.7% caches. Yeah, I mean, well, Marianne's always been a consistent player, just, you know, from the day one. And Leanne, by far, you don't, hey, listen, 25 titles, let's face it, you know, you don't get there unless you're consistent. So, you know, the women out here are top performers, top athletes. You know, if you're in the area, you gotta, you gotta come out and see these women perform, because we really are the best kept secret. That is true, and it's, and it's so interesting. You don't see, when you look out here and see them bowl a few games, but 42 games throughout the week is huge, and, and 42 games a week average leaders 12 to right. come up with these averages. I mean, Leanne, 217. Michelle Feldman, 217. Kendra Gaines. I mean, you don't average 217 just getting lucky. I mean, you bowl across different, different lanes, different conditions every week. I mean, it, it's great to see. And you also, you know, when you watch the TV, you say, you watch someone like Leanne, who can really hook the ball, and you say, is that all she can do? But if you were to come watch her in a tournament, you'd see she can play the whole lane. Yes, she can. It's amazing. Those averages compiled by Ebonite Tournament Coordinator, our official tournament software of the PWBA. And oh, I think she's, I, she had some problems. I think she stuck a little bit on that shot, pulled out of it a little bit, and was a little afraid it might hook by. It actually looked like it backed she, up a bit. Yeah. Hit that oil spot, as we've seen going across the lane. Well, she leads now by 36, and this is our 11th year here. The Pittsburgh Women's Bowling Association, they've been here all week doing a great job. We have to thank them once again for the volunteer work of the local women's bowling associations. Yeah. 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 on the all-time money leading list. Good comeback shot. Okay, it's getting down to crunch time. We're entering the eighth frame here. Putting a little pressure on, making some good shots, making some bad shots. Have to see who comes through. Marianne has to put a couple together here to get back in the swing of the game. Okay, so Marianne in the eighth, and you're right, Carolyn, she needs to start striking. She trails by 36 pins. Really has to step one up here. <laughs> Made a good shot, left the four pin. She just hasn't been able to carry as well as some of the games. She's moved deeper than she was playing. She got that ball further right. She seems like she's throwing it a little bit harder, but left the four pin. Made the adjustment. You know, you only have 10 frames. She didn't like what she had there the first four. You have to take a guess. Can't wait till the last frame. Game's over. Tune in next Monday for the Burlington Open from Country Club Lanes West in Burlington, North Carolina. Final round action begins at 10 p.m. Eastern. That's right here on ESPN2. There's a look at the score right now. Marianne DeRupo trailing by 37 pins. Leanne Barrett has it in, under control. At least it looks that way. she'll take this week as another positive. Go right on to next week and hopefully add another TV show to her list. Good shot by Marianne, got it further right. And she's very happy with that. She says, I finally carried one. And Barrett now working on a strike. 
Still up by 36. She can pretty much close the door here if she strikes again. The end is your cash in every event. Well, that pretty much well. Yeah, well, sums up the tournament. It sure does. Leanne Barrett already had won twice. This will make it 37. And yes, I'm going on that limb now and predicting Leanne's going to win this event. Title 26. You know, just another one, another trophy to add to the collection. She's made six of the last seven telecasts. What a run! Since '99, she has made the top 24 for 88 percent of the time. Leanne said she wanted to say hi to her nephew, nephews Cooper and Austin, and they have a new baby sister, Sophie. They do. Yes, yeah. and uh, mom, Sean, is doing fine. Leanne was there for the birth. She got there that, that morning, and that, or I should say, yeah, early that early morning, that and morning. later that day, she had a niece, so it was very nice. It was a good break for Leanne. She came back fresh. Leanne, very, very fond of children, and they respond well to her. So Lee Ann Barrett makes it three and one from the top seed this year. And wins our third title of the year. We'll be back with more. Stay with us. The championship round finals of the Three Rivers Open are being brought to you by the Women's International Bowling Congress, striving for 87 years to identify and fulfill the needs of women bowlers. By Travelodge Hotels, proud to be the official lodging sponsor of the Professional Women's Bowling Association. And by PWBA.com, relaunched to bring you more advanced and accessible news and information. Final score of the championship match of the Three Rivers Open, Leanne Barrett, 225 to Marion Rupos, 166. And there is your champion, Leanne Barrett. And as a special treat, we have the 2002 Pennsylvania State Female Bowler of the Year, Jody Sabaloskis, here to present the check. Leanne, I'd like to congratulate you this week on your great bowling. And from Princess Lanes, here's your check. Thank you, Jody. You're welcome. That was very Good luck. Time. Thank you. And we hope to see her on tour assignment time in the future. And in comes the general manager of Princess Lanes, John Jones. Leanne, congratulations. You had an excellent tournament. You, you, you went into match play and you never look back and you just, you, you tore everybody up. And we are so proud to have you as our, as our champion here at Princess Lanes in the Three Rivers Open. And three is, is good because this is your third win for the, this year. So congratulations. Here. I'd like to thank John and everyone here at Princess Lanes. This is our 11th year. I believe it's our longest running tournament, and it's one of our best ones. Um, I'd also like to thank Travel Lodge and WIBC and my ball company, Ebonite, for making the best bowling balls. And thank everybody for coming tonight. Thanks. So congratulations to Leanne Barrett as she wins her third title of the year and her 26th career title, placing her third on the all-time list. Join us next Monday for the inaugural Burlington Open at 10 p.m. Eastern. For Carol and Dorn Ballard, I'm Jan Schmidt. We'll see you next week. Stay safe. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.